I always think that I'm running late or I'm gonna forget something and I don't think I'm doing either of those today, but it still feels like it. It's a little too early for me. Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today and today I thought I would bring you along to my fluids appointment again and maybe answer some questions. I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer them fully, but I've gotten a lot of people asking me how I got set up on fluids, what that looks like with insurance. I know it is a very fortunate thing that I am able to do this um, and not everybody is able to either get it prescribed or get their insurance to cover it. So. I'm going to just talk about the whole experience of getting set up on IV fluids, where we started, where it is now, and all the details like how much I get, what I get, all that good stuff. But I want to get my stuff together, make sure I've got everything, and hit the road. <sighs> so I did forget something. I forgot my phone because I had it charging this morning. All right, in the car, we're going to get on our way, and I can talk about ivy fluids whose idea was it to have fluids this early because i know it wasn't mine i mean i know where i'm going i put the gps on every time still i don't know why okay because the sun is behind me i might appear dark at points so i apologize for that my phone is connected to the car <sighs> it's gonna be a lot of footage of me probably yelling at my phone Maybe I won't include that. I was trying to get my phone connected to the car so that way I could turn the car volume down but still be able to easily turn it up if I need directions, but um, it did not want to connect. Okay, so I have been doing IV fluids since November, October maybe, and I kind of, I did some videos sharing how I started it, but I'll explain it in a quicker version here. I was feeling very run down, very sick, and my ostomy output was really crazy, just like kind of consistently very watery last fall. And I was not actually seen by a GI. I was part of a practice. My old GI doctor retired. Then I was seen by a nurse practitioner who I didn't really see, didn't really do a whole lot for me. And then they left. Then I was seen by a PA, except I never saw her, I never saw the PA. The PA left, and then I never got another doctor. So I was sitting there without a doctor, but still technically part of a practice. And because I was so sick, I got a little bit desperate. So the last winter, I had gotten scopes done, and it was done by a doctor that I actually knew from conferences and from a previous job. Um, I had never been his patient before, but he did my scope. So I was like, hey, how you doing? Um, because he did that, because he gave me results on the MyChart app, I was able to then message him on the app. And so I reached out and I said, hey, I'm not really being covered by anybody. Nobody's seen me for a while. I don't feel good. Like, I feel very sick. Uh, my ostomy output is going crazy and I am just worn out like I can't keep my eyes open and I'm so tired and so he wound up giving me a call and we talked about it and I explained all the symptoms and he said you know what I think that you are dehydrated from what this sounds like and I don't know why it didn't really clue into me that that could be the case you know that whole being a GI nurse for a while didn't really do me any good I guess and when he said that, I was like, am I dehydrated? Because I, I do all the things, you know, I try to keep up on drinking enough water, you know, drinking more than what typical people require because I don't have a colon. I keep up on electrolytes and I, I try to do what I can. So when he said that, I was like, oh my God, am I dehydrated? <laughs> So he ordered the IV fluids. I know that not every doctor will do that. I have heard of some doctors not wanting their patients to become dependent on it. Uh, they want them to get their intestines to adapt and, and do the work, but not everybody can. Not everybody works that way. Not everybody has enough bowel to adapt 
or to be able to absorb enough fluid. Unfortunately, healthcare is so inconsistent. Some people ask me, how did you get IV fluids? I think I got really lucky. I think I did. Because not every doctor would order this. Um, I worked with doctors that didn't want to do this. So, yeah. Anyways, it started off with me doing home IV infusions. When I called the company that did it, uh, they said that it would be covered if I went into an IV clinic. It would not be covered at home, but the closest IV clinic is an hour away. So that's where I'm driving today. Um, but originally I did start with the home infusions. It costed me like $460 a week because it was $230, $240 every time that a nurse had to come to place an IV. So it got to the point where I was like, I'll try to keep my IV good for a week. You know, if I ran the fluids on a Monday and a Thursday, then I'll try to save the IV for a few days. And I got that to work. I was able to save the IVs. But that was not, I didn't want to do that long term. It's for me, it was miserable getting the IV, living with it in my home. I know that every day people live with pick lines and central lines and all of that. For me, if I can avoid it, it feels very medically to me. I know I have an ostomy and live with that every day at home. I think I'm just so used to it. Over time, you become used to these things. And having that IV in the house and like not being able to move my arm and having to be really careful and trying to wrap it up so the tegaderm didn't come loose. That was terrible to me. I hated it. Quick coffee break. <sighs> That's good. So anyways, I was like, you know what? It's worth it for me to drive the hour. And so I did. Um, I switched over to the clinic. They told me it was covered. It is not fully covered. I pay, I think, 90 something like that every time that I go. Um, thankfully, I've been able to space out a lot. So originally, I was ordered one liter twice a week. Then when I went to the clinic and saw my new GI doctor, who was wonderful, I was like, can I do two liters once a week? So that way I'm not driving twice a week an hour away. And he was like, yes, we can do that. And very soon I realized two liters that close together was too much. So we dropped it to a liter and a half. And once I got on that liter and a half for a while, I felt pretty good. And I was like, maybe we could do this every other week. So I still have that backup in case I have one funky day, which I would say in a two week period, it's likely that I'll have one day that's kind of off with my ostomy. It seems to cover me and that is where I have been for a few months now. And in that time, I have gained 10 pounds. I don't think it's fully fluid related, but I think that that definitely helped. Um, and yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's still, it's still a big cost. $90 is not anything to sneeze at. So that was kind of the process of me getting on IV fluids. I think when it comes to having a doctor prescribe you for fluids, it really depends on who you're seeing, like what kind of doctor you're seeing, what their experience is, what reason you're asking for IV fluids. I think in my case, the doctor knew that I had a long-standing run with Crohn's disease, um, nearly 20 years, and he knew that I had an ileostomy. He's seen me at conferences specifically related to ostomies, and when I explained that my symptoms seem to be my ostomy output is just really loose, and I told him I'm trying laparamide, and it doesn't seem to be cutting it, um, I think that's what made him say, let's try fluids. At least for now, let's try it. And I kind of just stayed on them when I spoke to my actual new GI doctor who is officially my doctor. Uh, I said, could we keep these on because it feels like a good safety net. And I think he was okay with that because I'm not relying on them. Uh, there's no way that I would be able to survive two weeks with a liter and a half of fluid. <laughs> That's not enough to sustain you. But, you know, I'm doing the work outside of it. And this was a nice little backup. That's why I think they were willing to keep me on it, prescribe it in the first place. Um, 
it's it's sort of an odd feeling because when I go into this clinic I don't feel like a sick enough person to be there infusion clinics deal a lot with chemotherapy although I have heard I'm like over here a lot of autoimmune patients there because I hear you know people getting Intivio or Remicade or Inflectra or you know whatever it is I hear people getting that and so I know that there's other people like myself I'm just not getting any of the infusions because I do injections um, I do an injectable biologic not an infusion one so I just do it at home because that's easier for me I just it's like very I feel too healthy to be there but at the same time I don't know um, one thing that I've noticed when I go to this clinic, I get a lot of questions from the nurses of why I'm there. I assume it says in my chart why I'm there. <laughs> uh, but who knows if people read into it because it's just, it's me going in there, a healthy looking person getting IV fluids. They may not dive deeper and see that I have an ileostomy. I don't know. Usually when I worked in the hospital, there was always a main diagnosis of why you were there. Now this is an outpatient thing, so there might not be, but there was always like a little yellow tag at the top of a patient's chart that said the main reason they were there. So if they were there for Crohn's disease, that was what was going to be on the top of the chart, uh, the computer chart. I, I don't know if it says that. Maybe it says Crohn's, that might be what it says, um, or it doesn't say anything because I'm outpatient. I have not like creeped hard enough on their version of epic <laughs> my, my guess is it doesn't have ileostomy on the top and when i go on my chart app it has everything that i was ever diagnosed with like every little thing they've got like gerd on there they still have proctitis i'm like i don't have a rectum anymore that's not possible so <laughs> it's a long list and to scroll to the bottom and see you know diverted ileostomy whatever whatever it says they probably don't do that and I understand it because I'm a healthy person assuming a healthy person coming in for fluids like I'm a very simple person to them but I almost always get asked why am I getting fluids and I'm like I have an ileostomy I've had it for a long time it started to act up and I needed help I needed help with it because it became too much to manage the output trying to drink the electrolytes and stuff so I'm usually like that's why I'm here ileostomy high output sometimes <laughs> not all the time that's why I'm not here very often uh, and this just kind of helps keep things going smoothly for me I did have one nurse ask why I didn't try drinking and I was like I, I do I would not survive off of 1.5 liters every two weeks. I drink, I promise you I do. Drinking doesn't always work. It works for the most part, but when you're only working with a small intestine, sometimes fluids run right through you. Like you get nothing out of it. It comes right out in your ostomy bag. Um, and those are the times when I try to take loperamide to slow it down, but it doesn't always work. So that's, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's why fluids are good. I also get asked if I ever plan to stop the fluids, and yes, I want to. Um, when I have the weird fluky days like Monday, it makes me scared to stop. It makes me scared to, to not have that backup anymore. And so that might be a discussion for you know a future appointment with my GI. Say I stop the fluids. Would you be willing to put me back on them? For emergency issues though, there is the ER, but you know, the ER is expensive. It's a whole ordeal. It's not fun being there. I feel like go to the ER to get sick. Like you're gonna pick up something else. <laughs> there are also the like bougie IV nurses that'll come to your house. And see, I hate driving in the morning here because then I have to merge with people. Hey, no matukas. Okay, there was a yield for me to merge on, a lot of freaking traffic, and there was the tiniest merge lane for me. That was maybe two cars lengths. What would you like me to do? I got honked at. Oh well, get over it. 
what was I saying? Um, I think I was talking about the bougie IV clinic. So the nurse can come to your house. Uh, they're becoming more and more popular. A nurse will come to your house, place an IV, run a bag of fluids, and you're good to go. They're expensive. This is something that you don't need a doctor's order for. They have their own doctors. Um, call them up and they'll come. Anyways, that is my experience getting on IV fluids and staying on them. I know a few other people that are active online, like Double Bagging It on Instagram. I think they're on TikTok too. Both of them get weekly IV fluids, so they would be good people to potentially ask about how they got started on IV fluids, but the process will be different for everybody, I think, unfortunately. And, well, I mean, we're all different, so it, it has to look at least a little bit different. Um, I think that if you feel like you're in desperate need of consistent IV fluids and you are not with a doctor that's willing to do that, look at what kind of doctor you're asking, their experience in the field. If I had actively been seeking it out myself um, to get on IV fluids, I would have made sure it's a doctor that has experience with ileostomies. Fluids today went okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, I had a little bit of a low blood pressure, which I didn't really expect, and I weighed 99.5. So, a little bit disappointing, and my blood pressure was 89 over, I can't remember the diastolic. And then the IV. <laughs> oh, the IV. The nurse that I had today, I really like. She's super nice. And uh, we had a little bit of trouble with the IV though. So the first one, it actually felt like it went in okay. But as soon as she went to advance it, oh my gosh, it hurt so bad. I, I almost teared up and I was like pinching my arm really hard. She saw, she saw I was in pain and she's like, I got blood return, but no. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, it's not gonna work. I can tell you right now, it's not gonna work. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it hurt. And so I was nervous for the second one, but the second one thankfully took. So I got two sticks again today. And then, you know, obviously had the IV fluids, I get a liter and a half and it's just 0.9% sodium chloride. Pretty plain and simple there, nothing special. And uh, after I got most of the fluids, I got my blood pressure rechecked and it did go up. I think I was 101 over 65 or something so typically I range from 95 to 105 um, as my systolic pressure uh, so it was a little low today at 89 and you know it is what it is I'm glad it went up now look at my hand <laughs> I look so injured <laughs> I'm not it's just it's just where they stuck me um, but I'm ready I'm so ready to go home that's a weird thing about fluids is it makes me so tired it's just, it's just fluids. It's just normal saline and I still feel so blah. Before I leave though, I think I'm gonna answer one more question because I know somebody is gonna say something about it. If I don't, um, I've talked about it before. I get asked a lot why I don't choose to get a pick line or a central line, um, anything like that, or a port. I personally, this is not including what a doctor may say, but I think that a doctor would probably agree with this. Not going to speak for him, but I am not qualified for either of those, nor do I want one. If you were unaware, I did work as a GI nurse, meaning that I cared for a lot of patients with different GI disorders. I also cared for um, different endocrine disorders and metabolic disorders. And all of those kids had either ports or picks or central lines of some sort, Broviacs, all of that. And there were a lot of risks associated with them. I have cared for many of them. I know what goes into the care of them. Um, I'm not interested in having to deal with that at home. Uh, ports also carry risks. It's a surgery to implant one. Not interested at this time. <laughs> and also, the frequency that I require anything through an IV is not very frequent. It's every two weeks. And I would say that I have pretty decent access. Um, my veins are not terrible. I do have some difficulty getting sticks, 
probably more related to the fact that I'm dehydrated. I'm going for fluids, so it kind of makes sense. Um, and I notice the days where I feel better, they have a lot easier time getting an IV on me than when I go in not feeling super great like today. I've been feeling off the last few days, sleeping a bit more. I thought I was hydrated, but after seeing that blood pressure, I don't think that I was as hydrated as I thought, and we had difficulty. Putting that aside though, it took two sticks, a total of maybe 10 minutes to get it. Uh, one nurse did it, wasn't a huge deal. So it really isn't that difficult to get an IV on me and only using IV fluids every two weeks, there would be no reason to get me a port or a pick line or central line. I think the risks versus benefits in this situation, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. So that is why I don't have one. I prefer to continue getting IV access, regular peripheral access, than going for the big bad boys. <laughs> um, there was a time at which we thought I would have to do TPN at home, and I remember both my dad and I were very afraid during our training sessions. And my, my biggest fear with it is getting some sort of blood infection from getting it contaminated. You know, I know how to try to prevent that, but it doesn't always stop it. And I've seen kids that have gotten really sick from um, infections from their pick lines or their ports or whatever. So yeah, that's my answer on that. That's why I haven't gone for that. But anyways, guys, I want to get home. I want to nap. I want to go to sleep. I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that maybe it answered some questions. I don't know how helpful it was in helping you get IV fluids if it's something that you feel you need, but um, maybe it sparked a thought and how it could help you. I don't know. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys.